name is Thomas Holland, and this is the Mercedes-Benz GLA 45 AMG. And, well, it's ridiculous. You are looking at the most powerful production 2-liter 4-cylinder turbocharged car in the world. I thought Focus RS numbers were impressive at 350 horsepower, but this AMG makes 375 horsepower, and you feel every single one of them, especially when you use launch control. I actually haven't fallen for a vehicle this quickly since the first time I drove a Miata. Yes, it's a bit pricey, but today I'm going to tell you why it's worth every penny. No, it doesn't have the clutch-based trick torque vectoring that the Focus RS has, it can only split its torque up to 50-50 front to back, but it makes up for that with razor-sharp chassis and suspension response. And once you are within the boost threshold, the 26 PSI beats you over the head with the club in typical a falterback style of AMG anger. Actually though, this is easily one of the most fun cars that I've driven in a long time. It honestly is. It is just bonkers fast. It's ridiculously fast. It does not look like it's going to be nearly as fast as it is. There are some other visual packages that you can get on the GLA 45, the AMG. You can get a little wing on the back, some like yellow piping and striping and all that stuff. But this one kind of looks a little bit understated, which makes you go, huh? When it goes off the line like an absolute rocket, 375 horsepower. This thing does not mess around. And a lightning fast seven speed transmission. Right now we're in race mode because I've been driving around in race mode like a child all week. It's absolutely awesome. So I'm just gonna downshift here and we're gonna listen to some pops and bangs. <laughs> listen to the upshift. <laughs> okay, uh, serious now. On this back road here, the transmission is amazingly fast. The engine is just a masterpiece. It genuinely is. This is one of the fastest cars that I've driven in a long time, including not four-cylinder cars. This feels more aggressive and more brutal than some V8s that I've driven recently. It just launches you. It really, really does, okay? It's not supercar fast. I, I'm, I don't want to overstate it too much, but honestly, it is genuinely very quick. And there is nothing that I could consider turbo lag. There's no lag of any kind. There's no lag in the shifts. There's no lag in the engine. There's no lag in the steering. The only time that there would be what you could feel as lag is the fact that since it is a DCT, as you pull away from a stoplight, you actually feel the clutch engaging. And if you're not used to that and you don't know what that is, I could see how that would be a little bit weird to you. It would be kind of annoying. It's like right now I go and then, then the clutch engages and off you go. But then you put your foot down. just goes and it barks on the upshift really aggressively and then I downshift <laughs> and it gurgles and it pops and it bangs and the best thing about it about the exhaust is that it's so charismatic there's no predictability to when it's going to pop or when it's going to bang like some of them that are really electronically controlled so it just makes a whole host of different sounds and sometimes it surprises you honestly I've been driving it for six days now and there hasn't been a time when it's made a noise that I was like, oh, I've already heard that one. Nuh uh, doesn't do that. It just keeps being fun all the time at all speeds. Okay, so the engine, as I said, is ridiculously fast 375 horsepower, 350 something pound feet of torque, and it just pulls you so violently in certain gears, right? So, in let's get we're gonna be at 30 kilometers an hour right now, and put your foot down. There it is. <laughs> pop, 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 pop. <laughs> okay, I, I honestly, this has brought out the eight-year-old in me. This car genuinely has. E even the interior here is super, super middle school. <laughs> it really is, and I love it. It's a seriously childish car, and there is not one part of that character of it that I don't like. I wouldn't change any of that, none of it. However, let's talk about the styling. Now, Mercedes says that this is an SUV. It's kind of hatchback size, isn't it? In fact, I parked it right next to a Honda Civic Type R and the dimensions are almost exactly the same. 
And the styling is fantastic, I think, on the outside. These AMG 20-inch wheels look great, and the styling on the side and the back, you can get more aggressive styling packages in this, but I like this because it's understated and aggressive at the same time. You almost can't tell that it's a, an AMG from certain angles. And a lot of the exterior stuff is really well done. The panel gap is perfect and consistent. It's obviously very German. And the electronics work good too. This is a pet peeve of mine. I don't like it when you walk up to a car and you have to fight with these buttons and the locking and unlocking. This is just very, very well made and it works very well. It unlocks very quickly and I can unlock it from the back door too and lock it. How cool is that? So, I mean, it, this is just a really good looking, well-made hatchback SUV. It's not really an SUV. By not really, I mean it's not an SUV at all. It's definitely not an SUV. It's most definitely a hatchback, <laughs> but we're calling it an SUV today. Uh, okay, um, let's talk about the way that this car uh, handles. You can get an AMG track package, which has a limited slip differential and that would allow you to get the power down even more aggressively. But I'm honestly not seeing a scenario where you would need that on the road because some cars you feel like, oh, you really want that diff because you can feel it all the time. The suspension, the sport suspension in this is sophisticated enough that I haven't been able to spin the wheels. It just plants itself and you can crank the wheel and put your foot down and it will just haul you through a corner very, 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 very aggressively. Like Honda Civic Type R levels of stamp your foot and turn the wheel. The front end on this does not feel quite as sharp as a Honda Civic Type R though. The Type R has very fast steering and it kind of darts into the corner. This doesn't quite have that level of front end sharpness and I think it's kind of just down to the, the, the steering rack because I feel like it's a little bit slow. I feel like I turn into the corner and the front end doesn't just kind of uh, grab into the corner the way that I, I, I wish it would, but it is still very, very good, right? It feels like Golf R kind of front end turn in. That said, uh, there's definite precision to the steering that I like. There's just enough steering weight and there isn't really any detectable understeer on normal uh, roads like this, right? As I have had, I'd love to track this car, but I have not had it on track, so I can't really tell you what it's like at the limit perfectly. But I can tell you that I haven't come across understeer yet in any scenario. You just turn into the corner and the front just keeps pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling in, and you can almost feel a little bit of rear end lightness, right? I can't drive it any faster than that, so I can't tell you properly, but I can tell you that on the road for daily driving, this car is phenomenally sharp. It really is. This has the sport suspension because it has that package. And when I turn it into, I think I've got a whole bunch of modes. So let's go to comfort mode, puts everything in comfort. If I go into sport mode, uh, the suspension stays in comfort, but the engine goes into sport. If I go into sport plus mode, there's a lot of modes. If I go to sport plus mode, the engine is in sport plus. So it's a little bit sharper. The, now the suspension is now in sport and that firms up the ride quite a lot. The turn in becomes better and you still don't get really like, it's not like focus RS track level where you like kind of, your teeth are shaking out. It's not like that. It's still a very well damped, very compliant ride, even in track mode. It is obviously too stiff for driving all the time, but that's what the comfort mode's for. And you go over into race mode. Race mode does a lot of different things. Number one, it makes it completely undrivable in the city because it refuses to upshift. So, but intentionally, that's a good thing. It will hold, it's holding me in second gear. 4,000, part throttle, 5,000. See, it won't upshift until you get to the red line. Now, foot down, and then third, and yeah. So, it is genuinely meant for the track. It really is. I put it in race mode because it gives me the really loud exhaust and I like the suspension like that. I like the engine and the throttle response and then I put it in manual mode and then I use the paddles and that works really, really well for the road I find because then you get to have all the pops and bangs with the active exhaust, uh, the really sporty suspension, the, st the, 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 the handling is fantastic and it makes all the good noises and then I don't have to worry about it holding a really high gear. Now let's talk about uh, the interior a little bit. So we, as I said, we have a completely juvenile dashboard design with the carbon fiber and red accents and AMGs and lines everywhere. It's really, really awesome and I love it. Um, and the steering wheel is excellent. So this is the, the AMG Sport Package, which comes with the Alcantara on the sides and it comes with leather, like Napa leather on the top and bottom and the shape of it is perfect. The size of it is perfect. It looks fantastic. The paddles are like a smooth aluminum 
and they're just genuinely very, very nice. This steering wheel is fantastic. The materials in here are okay. They're not like uh, E-class level of Mercedes, obviously. Everything is soft touch and there's some nice stitching, uh, but there's like some hard plastics down here and you know, it's a pretty basic design. It, it, it's similar to the, the CLA if you've driven one of those. So, or the regular GLA for that matter. That's not really something that has bothered me at all though. So no, it does not feel ultra luxury Mercedes. It doesn't, but it feels like ridiculous AMG Mercedes. And it feels like you're putting your money into the right part of the car if you're an enthusiast. This is perfect for someone like me. I wouldn't change a thing about the interior of this car at all, other than maybe the infotainment. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, the seats are, they got the Alcantara half seats and they're really comfortable. I have not had any discomfort whatsoever the entire week driving this. I've got enough headroom. This, this package comes with a panoramic sunroof. And uh, the climate is very, very easy to use. I like, the, it's down here, it's out of the way, easy to read, buttons are simple, fan up, fan down, temperature, temperature, done. The infotainment though, not a huge fan. Thankfully, we do have some hard buttons here on the uh, the centerpiece, but I have this dial over here where my hand is down here, and I don't really like it because it, it doesn't see, it's not really super intuitive how to navigate with it. And what bothers me the most is that this screen, which looks like, like an Android tablet glued to the dash, is not a touch screen. So all week, since it's well within reach, I'm touching it right now, and it looks like a tablet, I've been attempting to use it as a touchscreen all week, and it's not. You have to use this little wheel. So I go out of Apple CarPlay here, which I'm using, which works fine. No problems with Apple CarPlay at all. And this is the same as I just tested a uh, C300 wagon. You might have watched that review. Do that if you haven't yet. I go into more in-depth on this infotainment. I'm not going to go too much into it, but there's certain things that I don't like. The radio, when you click on the radio, it gives you your list of channels, but you don't see all the details of what's playing or anything else in the channel. You have to like click the down wheel, go over to info, click info, and it brings up the full channel. And then it's not super quick to get back. You have to click the button up and it brings up your, your menus that drop in from the top and the bottom. And then you have to go over and click Apple CarPlay or vehicle, or whatever it is. But if we go into vehicle settings, uh, the settings are quite extensive and they're very good. Uh, dynamic select, I can configure my uh, personal mode, right? Which is nice, so I can select which uh, damper, what, if I want sport damper, sport exhaust, if I want the, the gearbox and race. So I have the, the sorry, the tra uh, engine race, I have the uh, damping and comfort, and I have manual transmission selected, and the ESP and sport, which backs it off a little bit. So that's my configuration, and I like the fact that I can do that. That's nice to have. Like vehicle data, engine data, um, and there's a whole host of, you can of change how long the lights stay on after you leave and I have ambient lighting in the car, which is pretty cool. It's not like super high level ambient lighting. It kind of comes down in between the headrest and the seat and there's some in the footwell and like the handles and you can change the color. I picked purple because it was fun. I don't know. <clears throat> now the screen in between my two dials here, the dials look really good by the way, and they've got some carbon fiber on them and they say AMG, therefore they're awesome. And they're really easy to read. Um, my center screen is actually really uh, sharp, very easy to read and well designed. Uh, the interface took a minute for me to get used to it. You go over with the over arrows and then you can go all the way to uh, the AMG screen which gives you your speed, what gear you're in, uh, engine temperature, or sorry, oil temperature, coolant temperature, and gearbox temperature right there. So this car is ready as it is to take it under the track because those are the things you genuinely would want to monitor when you're uh, driving a car that is this boosted on the track. I like the, uh, the the actual gear selector. It's not a stock like you get on the CLA. It, it looks really cool. We've got the AMG uh, badge uh, kind of embossed on the top of the leather, which is really nice. Now, the rest of the interior is good. It's spacious. I can sit behind myself, if that were a thing that I would ever be able to do. And the back hatch is powered, and it's big enough. This has, it feels like it has the interior space of a hatchback. It genuinely does. That's that's how I would describe the interior here. It's not any bigger or smaller than a golf. It, oh, squirrel! Oh, that I do. God, this road. Please don't say I killed that squirrel. It's a good thing I drive some really nice cars on this road because I've got really sharp steering response so I can not just murder animals all day long, apparently, is a thing that I need to be worried about. And the price is good. It is. 
it's honestly I think that this car is a steal no it does not have the Mercedes level of luxury that you would get in the C class and the E class perhaps but it has some proper AMG performance someone signed the engine they hand assembled it it's an AMG it genuinely feels special if you've ever driven a BMW and then you've driven an M car if you've driven a Mercedes and then you've driven an AMG you'll know that there's something different about them they actually go out of their way to make them genuinely exciting and feel special. This car feels special every time you drive it. The steering wheel feels special, the interior feels special, and the engine and the sound that it makes. <laughs> pop, pop, pop. It feels like an occasion every time you drive this car. And honestly, if you're looking for kind of a small, enthusiast, but runabout, practical car, and you've got a little bit more money than you would need to get a Focus RS or a Type R, even though they're really close in price to this, then there, you should not hesitate to buy one of these, honestly. It does what those cars do. It does what those crazy hot hatchbacks do. The Golf R, the Type R, the, the Focus RS, it does what those do, and it does everything else better. It does comfort better, it does looks better, it does quality better. It does all of those things, but better. And the performance is better. As I said, I haven't had this on the, on the track, and I know that the Focus RS and the Type R can be phenomenally good at the limit on a track, so I can't comment about how this one would be like that. I'd love to track this car someday, but I can tell you the rest of the stuff, this one does it better. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. You know what to do. Uh, you don't want to miss any more car reviews because i got lots of exciting stuff just like this coming uh, all the way into the fall. I have a website, thethrottlehouse.com, and Instagram, at thethrottlehouse. I can't think of anything else that I'm supposed to tell you. That's it for now. Bye.